Paul again, Steve here with a few comments about the words equality or equal and just. We see that a lot of times justice or law is signified by a woman, some sort of a Greek goddess probably, holding up the scales of justice. And we know what's funny about that is, if you normally look at it, it's skewed to one side, right? It's not equal. And I don't know if that's lost on a lot of people. It certainly was lost on me for a long time. So it, it signifies injustice, right? Because if it was just, it would be straight across. And maybe sometimes it is. I don't know for sure. But anyways, that's the scale, the scale of, of justice. Because if we look at the word <coughs> iniquity that we see in biblical scriptures and so on, if you look it up, what it means is it means not equal or not just. So equal and just are synonymous, right? So true justice means that there has to be an evening out. So in old times, you know, they say an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and so on. So if you killed somebody, that was the justification for the killing, right? If you ripped somebody off, you had to pay them back, and so on, because there had to be this evening out, this equity that had to go on. And mis miscarriages of justice, if they are called, if they are going to be justice, if it's miscarriage of justice, it means that there is not an equaling out. And we see this a lot in, in courts and so on, where the the scene is rigged in a way, right? They have, if you go in there and you're not familiar with their rules and so on, you're not told everything. And all of a sudden, you're sentenced for something or you're, there's a ruling and so on. And the guy on the other side of the bench, he knows all the rules and he knew you outstepped something. But that's not justice, right? Because if you weren't fully informed, That'd be like entering into a real estate deal or something like that, where all of a sudden you're fleeced of a bunch of money, but you don't end up with the real estate or something like that. It just it wouldn't make any sense. So a justice system which is not just, which does not look for complete equity, is an injustice system. And, and that's the, um, the prevalent way things are, I would say. Um, you know, a prime example would be if you're to go in there and the saying is you're presumed innocent, right? Like you're, there's, there's a presumption that not everything connects up to you. So if there's you and there's this alleged wrongdoing, the purpose of the process is to connect you with the wrongdoing. Say it is, right? Well, when you go in, the presumption is that you're not connected to the wrongdoing. So there must be this and this and this and this and this and this have to add up to equal you, you plus all of those equals the wrongdoing. So if you ask a simple question, Mr. Judge or whatever, am I presumed innocent of all of the elements which lead up to this? If he's going to, on one hand, say that you're presumed innocent, then he has to, in fact, admit that you are presumed innocent on all of them. Now, one of those items, of course, within a system, right? Within a system, because it's just a system. It's a system, it's not the system, because every so-called country has a different system. So within a system, one of the elements is jurisdiction, right? In other words, the operatives within that system are claiming jurisdiction over you in that case. That is one of the elements. But if, if you're not one of that group, then that has to be thrown out because there's no jurisdiction, right? Supposing there's all these different so-called countries here and there and everywhere, and somebody from here is injected in, and there's a requirement 
that you must be from here in order for this to apply, and you're not from there, you're from over here, as soon as they get to, oh, you're not belonging to here, no jurisdiction, out it goes. So if you're presumed innocent on all of the elements, then jurisdiction, jurisdictional governance, shall we say, or whatever, has to also be presumed. You must be presumed innocent on that as well. So if you're guilty of, of jurisdiction, that means that you must comply, right? So if you're, so that's, that's an interesting question, isn't it? I, I've heard of people who've done this. Am I to be presumed innocent? Am I, am I presumed innocent? Yes. Am I presumed innocent on all elements that lead up to the charge or whatever it is? Yes, of course. All right, then. So I'm innocent of jurisdiction, aren't I? Ooh, baby. That's a tricky one now. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now that, now all the whole shit, the courtroom's going to go shit, cra shit stir crazy and paperwork being flipped around and everything else because you're not supposed to ask that question, right? You're not supposed to ask that question. It puts them in a, an impossible situation because, but, but they'll just proceed anyway for the most part. They just proceed. Because they cannot admit that there's no jurisdiction. Can't do it. Cannot do it. They can't prove it. They will begin to lie, begin to connive, begin to try to divert, 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 abort, 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 awooga, 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 dive, dive, dive. We have a jurisdiction question here. We can't have this. Or just be bang, we'll recess. Down will go the gavel. This is a dangerous question. Because if the answer is yes on that, then of course, jurisdiction has to be proven. It has to be proven every step of the way. Not, 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 it doesn't even have to be a trial issue, of course. Because why am I even here? And especially if one is dragged in in chains and ankle shackles and so on. There's no, one can't make the claim that because you entered the room, <laughs> that somehow proves that you're admitting to jurisdiction. No, buddy. I was dragged in here on my ass on sh in shackles. You can't claim that now I came in here on my own volition. So it's an interesting question anyway, is jurisdiction, uh, because that is, that is fundamental, right? And it's age old. It goes back to the divine right of kings. It goes back to the Pope. It goes back to all the, you know, God is who made you, and I am the holy vicar of God. I am the one who speaks for God here. You are all of God's dominion, and I am God's channel. I am the oracle of God. I speak the word of God, and I say that you are of jurisdiction. This is all just, it's all fantasy, all, it's all irrationality. You've got people with real guns, though, in the mix. But I think it's an interesting question. Now, it's not going to work for the most part because psychopaths are psychopaths and they'll just deny, deny, deny and just operate anyways. I mean, they still got guns, they throw you in jail. You know, nobody knows about it, plausible deniability, didn't understand the question, the guy was incoherent, send you for, send you for a psych checkup or whatever else. Uh, throw Meads versus Meads down in front of you and just proceed anyway as though you understood it. Uh, all this nonsense. But, so they're not going to change their mind probably. But what it is, it gets clear in us what equity is. And we begin to see the imbalance. We begin to see that why that scale is hanging to the side like this. Because it is injustice. It is not justice. And it's blind, too. It's completely blind. Lady Justice is blind. Doesn't see what's going on. Doesn't care. Doesn't see what's going on. Who knows why? But her scale is imbalanced. There's no justice. There's no equality. There is a gesture of iniquity. And the old prayer goes, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us of our sins. I think this is telling us something. You know, we have this tendency to be unjust and to not bother making sure, as the Freemasons say, that everything is built on the level. Some thoughts, anyways. Steve here again, great chatting. 
talk again soon. Bye-bye for now.